Good morning. I would like to welcome our viewers to PIC Sabbath School Lesson Review. We have been blessed by an amazing lesson this week. It is actually in direct connection from the lesson that we have been studying last week. But before we, like, before we start, I would like to pray first. Let's pray. Dear God, we would like to thank you that we have this Sabbath morning to worship you, to read your words, to remind us that you are an amazing God who loves us. I pray this morning, please guide me, fill me with the Holy Spirit. Dear Lord, hide me behind the cross so that only your words be heard, not mine. Dear Lord, bless our viewers as well. Give them the Holy Spirit so that they will have enlightenment from you. This we pray in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. So, our lesson this week is titled, The Lord Reigns. Now, I said earlier that this is in direct connection with last week's lesson because if we notice, last week's lesson is about teach us how to pray, wherein the author was talking about the Psalms being used as a means of guidance on how we pray, a way of catharsis in times of trouble. Now, we see as well that in, every, in some part of the Psalms, we see the writers in despair. They are almost losing hope, but there it is. They go back to God, their only hope. Now, this is in direct connection with our lesson this week, The Lord Reigns. Because like our memory verse for this week, let us read it in Psalms 93 verse 1. It says, The Lord reigns. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed in majesty, armed with strength. Indeed, the world is established, firm and secure. That is found in Psalms 93 verse 1. Now, if we imagine this memory verse for this week, it makes us envision God's grandeur, robed in majesty. It is not just mediocrity. This is amazing majesty that if a sinful person sees this, they will surely perish. Or when an ordinary person sees this, they will be awestruck, really. So, we see here, it opens with the Lord sovereign rules. Does he, run, uh, so the whole world is fully established because God reigns. So there are, there are five, I think there are five, yes, there are five different aspects in this. Let us explore on this. So the first thing that we have to understand is that the author taught us is God the creator. The Lord reigns as a creator. So, one thing that we have to understand is God did not make us. Instead, He created us out of nothing. So, everything that is in existence basically owes its existence to God. There is nothing that we can be proud of there is nothing that I can say, it is mine. Everything is from God. This is an amazing thing because, you see, the psalmist somehow understood the grandeur of God and the minuteness of humanity that he basically says, what is man that you are mindful of him and the son of man that you visit him? See, when we encounter God in His grandeur, in His majesty, in, air, in His light, we cannot help but be in awe because He is just that glorious. Now, what we see here is the Lord reigns as well. He is not just our creator. He did not just create us. He also He also. He also created us and then sustains us. When 
when the psalmist says in Psalm 93 verse 1 that the Lord reigns, this is an almighty power that ruleth. This is not an impotent God that made the world and then left the world. Basically, everything that we see, every star that we see, everything that is in orbit, everything that is in the universe, moving or not, is being ruled by God. We have to put this in mind that God is not an absent God. He is a God that is always present. He is a God that is in control. That is one thing that we have to understand. God created the world and He is in control. We saw this when He is in the wave and He condemned the winds and the waves and the winds and the waves obeyed Him. That is the control of God. No power on earth can ever do that. So, that is one aspect of God. So, another thing that we have to understand, it says here in Psalms 97.10, those who love the Lord hate evil. So what we see here is there is a responsibility for those who love the Lord as well. What is it to us that why? Why does the righteous people hate evil? Because God is righteousness and evil is the total opposite. God is the total opposite of unrighteousness or evil or sin. So you can only love one. Either you love God or you love sin or evil. And those who are righteous, those who love God, hate evil. Now, we see here as well, God is king. When we say God is king, it is not just a reigning monarch sitting down on a throne without care in the world. This is not just a monarch that sits or a president of the Philippines that sits far away that doesn't understand me. When it says God reigns, this is God reigns supreme, omnipotent. Meaning you, you, brother or sister, you are in the presence of God and God is in control. Now, how do we put this into action? How do we apply this in a little bit? You know, there is a famous painting back then in the Louvre. It's now sold after 1999. It's about a chess player fighting against the devil. And he, it says there, the title of the painting is Checkmate. And you can see the, 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 the face of the person that is losing to the devil because under there it says, once the person loses to the devil, his soul is taken by the devil. You know, when a famous grandmaster chess player went in there and looked at the painting, he was staring at the painting for an hour. And then he called the curator and says, it's either you took away, take away this painting or you change this. Because the king has one more move. You know, brother, sister, wherever you are right now in your situation, I want you to understand this, that God reigns. He is holding everything. He is in control of everything. You might feel that you are losing, but you know what the grandmaster chess player says? This person does not know what is happening, but the king has one more move. Apparently, the whole thing he thinks that he is on the losing side, but apparently he is on the winning side. Wherever you are right now, God, the King, is in control. You just have to wait for him, and he is going to make his move. Another thing that we see here is God, the judge. You know, this is 
one aspect that some people are a bit, you know, awkwardly approaching or scared about. When we say judgment, some people think, oh, they put in, they have in their minds fear. They have in their minds inadequacy. You know, there is an amazing thing that is said here. One is this. God, the judge, is not just, God, the judge, is not just actively seeking our mistakes. Instead, he is, he says this, God does not simply promise not to reject his covenant people. He actively works to keep them secure in him. He forgives their sins. That's one. He instructs them. That's two. He bless them. That's three. He strengthens his people. That's four. You see, God, the judge, does not act like what we saw in our courtroom today that sits there. God empowers his children to become his children. You know, sometimes we say, I am scared I might not be adequate enough. I might have not done anything good or I might not be in line with God. But we have to remember that God the judge is there to empower us. This is the amazing thing. God's judgment are given to turn people to righteousness and to demonstrate that God cares for them. This is a judge that cares for you. This is a judge that loves you. This is a judge that makes, that gives everything to empower you so that you will be able you will be able to become his children. Now, another thing that we see here is God of the covenant. God of the covenant. What we see here is there is a covenant, but this covenant is the covenant God has given unto us. You see, the children of Israel before has made a covenant with God and they almost instantaneously broke it. Because this covenant is based on human will, on human power. But the covenant that God has given unto us is an amazing covenant that is powered by God powered by the blood of Jesus Christ. Some say, um, what, uh, what, what will happen to me on the judgment? If God is a covenant God, I'm not worthy. I'm, I'm not this. Or what if I a bit sinned a little bit? Oh, you know, the best um, analogy for this is the same covenant that we have as earthly people here. I might not be married, but I can see that when a husband and wife become one, they are on a covenant. Now, when they are on a covenant, if the wife, let's just say they had an argument, they don't just break up instantly, right? They might have an argument and they will fix it. That is the same with the covenant that God has given to us. God is the one that it, this is the blood of Christ in the covenant. This is it. When we hear covenant, we have to have assurance because the blood of the bulls and the lambs does not have assurance. Only the blood of the Lamb of God, which is Jesus Christ. This is the assurance that we have. This is the thing that we can depend on. When we say you can depend on it, you can really depend on it. It's like crossing a bridge. Let's just say you have seen a bridge and then you are not sure and a friend said, I will walk. I will walk this. You see, he walked, he came back. When he came back, he said, that's the assurance. You still don't believe? I will walk again and then come back again. You see, 
God has given us assurance again and again and again on His covenant. And lastly, God of law. It is amazing because when we see this, the God of law, God of order. This is not the, just the law that finds us and looks for us in every time we have a mistake. No, this is the law of love, the law of righteousness. And it is not burdensome. What we see here is God's law is His testimony. It is reliable. You can bring it to the bank. And you say, yes, this is dependable. God's testimony can be depended on. So we can see here that now the five aspects of God is creator. He is the creator. He is the king. He is the judge. He is the covenantal savior. He is the law giver. And when we look at this, when we look at this, we see assurance. You know, I would like to read one thing here in Psalms 93. It says here, the Lord reigns. He is clothed in majesty. This is our um, uh, memory verse. The Lord is clothed. He has girded himself with strength. Surely the world is established so that it cannot be moved. The world cannot be moved. That's how sure it is. It says here, your throne is established from of old. You are everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord. The floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their waves. The Lord on his on high is mightier than the noise of many waters, than the mighty waves of the sea. Your testimony are very sure. Holiness adorns your house, O Lord, forever. What we can see here is praising. We don't see, we don't see the psalmist fear, with like um, te being terrified. But we see here them praising God, them Rejoicing that the Lord reigns. Now, how do we apply this? How do we apply this in our daily lives? I would like to share to you Psalm 61. This is the, my favorite Psalms when I am in trouble, when I am feeling like I am not, I am not knowing where I am right now, or when I am not sure if I will be saved, if I, if, I am, if I am not worthy to go in front of God. But look at this. In Psalm 61, verse 2, it says here, oh, let's go with verse 1. Hear my cry, O God. Attend my prayer. For the end of the earth, I will cry to you. When my heart is overwhelmed, Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For you have been a shelter for me, a strong tower for the, from the enemy. So we see here that God, from the psalmist's perspective, is a shelter. You see, the psalmist did not just say shelter. It says, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. When we do not, when we are not led to the rock that is higher than I, we just see problems after problems after problems. But when we are into the rock, the immovable rock, and we put our trust on God, that whatever is happening around us, whatever is happening in our lives, that the king has one more move to do, it is going to be a majestic thing. We just have to trust God in His assurance over and over and over again. That's why last week, we remember, this is the Psalms that we pray, we sing when we are in despair, when we are in trouble, because this is the assurance that we have. I want you to understand that the whole theme of Psalms is the Lord reigns. When you read 
The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. The Lord reigns. When you read Psalm 91, that whoever makes the Lord his refuge, the Lord reigns. The Lord is omnipotent, omnipresent, all-knowing. This is what I want us to understand in this lesson. Because once we understand that the Lord is in control of everything, then we understand why the psalmist, even in the midst of the enemy, even in the midst of the battle, God still prepared a table for him. We sometimes think, oh, how does the psalmist do that? That in spite of being exiled from his palace, in spite of being hunted, he still says, you are my rock. It is because David... The psalmists, everyone that wrote on the psalms, they put their trust on God. Many times they don't see what's going to happen. Many times they don't see if there is an end to their trials. But what we do not see in these psalms is they don't say, I don't trust you anymore. They trust God. So I want us to understand that. I want to keep unto us to our hearts. And as we continue on in these lessons about the Psalms, I want us to understand that the Lord reigns. Put that always into context. And I hope we have been blessed, been blessed by this lesson. And I hope that we are going to continue on reading this. Let me pray for you, brothers. Let's pray. Dear God, we are so thankful that you reign, you are supreme, you are all-powerful, that you show the plans already and nobody can topple your plans. We are so amazed, we are so at awe at your amazing glory. And we are also at awe, dear Lord, at your amazing grace. That who are we, dear Lord, that you will care for us little people here on earth. We are so thankful, dear Lord, that you love us. You care for us. You empower us. You forgive us. And you shelter us, dear Lord. We pray, dear Lord, that you continue, dear Lord, to fill us with the Holy Spirit. This we pray in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.